Research has established that winter feeding of livestock on kale or fodder beet opens the area that's been grazed to significant nitrogen leaching. But recent trials show that leaching losses can be greatly reduced when a catch crop is established directly following winter grazing. What we mean by a catch crop is a crop that is grown over the winter time to mop up nitrogen and reduce the amount of nitrogen that is leached into the waterways. And an initial lysimeter study at Lincoln University by Peter Carey showed that growing a catch crop can reduce leaching by about 20% or more. And obviously it does depend on the time of year, the amount of rainfall that you get over the, the winter time, and also the soil has a big effect as well. So whether we're talking about a stony soil or a, a deep soil that has an effect. During this grazing period, there's lots of animals on the ground, there's a lot of uh, trampling, so it is very difficult potentially to get a crop into the ground at that time of year. So what we're trying to find is ways that farmers can get the seed into the ground in order for them to get a reasonable yield and to take up enough nitrogen to actually affect nitrate leaching. After winter grazing they're left with bare soil and often this uh, fallow period or the bare soil will remain right through until October before the next crop is put in the ground. So what we're trying to do is establish something within that time to mop up that nitrogen and reduce leaching. We are seeing that in individual urine patches the nitrogen content can be between about 300 and 400 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. If we think about the coverage of urine on the paddock, it can be up to about 80 or 100 percent of the area is covered with urine patches, so that is a lot of nitrogen in a small area to deal with. This is a trial at Plant and Food, and we were trying to establish an oat crop in the middle of the winter. So we've got two crops that we're experimenting with, oats and rye corn and also two sowing dates, so either July or August. What we're trying to do is find ways for farmers to reduce leaching after winter forage grazing of either uh, fodder beet or kale. As we know, most of the dairy cows on the milking platform are taken off during the winter and grazed on these crops. Because of the high yielding nature of these crops, we have a lot of cows on a small area, and we know that most of the leaching comes from the urine, so with the High numbers of cows, lots of urine that gets applied to the soil. During this time, the amount of leaching risk is very high. So we need to find ways to reduce the amount of leaching that occurs from those grazed forage crops. In this case, we haven't got the cows involved, so they're fully uh, controlled plots. So what we have to do is to simulate cow urine, and we have done that by applying nitrogen uh, fertiliser at a rate that is equivalent to what is in the loading of a urine patch, which is around about 400 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. For the farmer's perspective, we want to know how much yield we're getting from the crops. Um, obviously, uh, sort of July or August is not when we normally sow them, so we want to know for the farmer what yield we can get. Environmentally, we want to know how much nitrogen can be taken up in the crop and reduce how much nitrogen can be reduced in the soil. We were quite enthused about what yields we were getting. We had yet to do a final harvest, but we could be expecting up to 10 or 12 tonne. In a trial that we did last year, which was basically the same, we got yields between 6 and 12 tonne of dry matter per hectare, which is quite a significant amount considering they were sowing right back in the middle of winter. We have compared the rye corn and the oat, and it seems that the rye corn may be uh, taking up nitrogen a little bit earlier, but the crop seems to sort of mature earlier as well, and we don't get the yields potentially from the rye corn like we do with the oat but both crops seem to be taking up quite a lot of nitrogen and reducing the amount in the soil at risk of leaching. The data that we're seeing at the moment is that we're seeing quite high yields from, from the oats, probably more than we expected, uh, given that they are sown in the middle of the winter. Um, and we're also seeing quite a bit of nitrogen reduced in the soil through, um, through growing an oat. This graph here shows the total amount of nitrogen remaining in the soil at the 60 to 120 centimetre depth. And if we think about overseer, anything that moves down below 60 centimetres is considered leached. So this graph here shows that in the fallow treatment, by end of November we're seeing about 80 to 90 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare remaining in the soil. However, by sowing a catch crop in either July or August, this is reduced down to below 20. So quite a significant reduction. Anything that we do to reduce leaching, we want to, to make it as attractive to the farmer as possible so that it gets adopted. So the yield, the yield benefit here is important. Um, by growing oats in the system, we're actually getting more annual biomass, so 
even though the oats are taken end of November, which is about a month after when the next crop would normally be put in the ground, um, any loss in that next crop is actually more than, than compensated for by these oats. What we're trying to address now are the practical implications of getting oats in the ground after winter grazing. So we've got our controlled trial back at Plant and Food. We haven't got the animal there. What we need to look at is how it looks on farm. So really we're looking at, um, at different establishment techniques of the oats. Um, do we need to sort of cultivate the soil before we put the oat in the ground? Can we direct drill? Or is there some way that we can sprinkle the seed on through, through broadcasting? Um, so when we're looking at those on farm here at Ashley Dean, at the Lincoln University Ashley Dean farm, we've got uh, two paddocks. One paddock was grazed by fodder beet, the other paddock was grazed by kale. And there could be differences um, in terms of getting seed in the ground because of the compaction issues. Um, so generally higher compaction under the fodder beet uh, paddocks than under the kale paddock. Based on our results, it indicates that a catch crop after, after winter grazing can reduce the amount of nitrogen that is potentially leached, as well as provide more annual biomass. So um, it's adding um, more dry matter into the, the system uh, annually, um, even if there's a delay in when the next crop can be put into the ground. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.